So what is your Mount Rushmore, your four favorite exercises that target either the lateral or posterior deltoid? Yeah. So the ones that really seem to start working for me was when I got away from kind of your traditional delt exercises of an overhead press and like a dumbbell lateral raise. Like and also dumbbell lateral raises, easiest thing to do. You grab and you do lateral raises and everybody says lateral raises, lateral raises, lateral raises, most important thing for, for delt development and getting those cap shoulders. Um, but as we've come to understand more and more and more is that you get a greater hypertrophy stimulus um, when you apply tension to a muscle when it's at a relatively longer length. And if we think about the biomechanics of a dumbbell lateral raise specifically, it gets harder and harder and harder as the lever arm increases. So when your arm is straight out to your side, that is when the distance of the load is furthest from the fulcrum. And anyone, you don't need to, you need to understand physics to understand this. Is it easier to hold the dumbbell at your side or maybe two inches from your, your hip or that same load directly out to the side like you're doing an iron cross? And the answer is it's really hard to hold it directly out to the side. So you're limited uh, by the strength in that position when you're doing a dumbbell lateral raise. And that's also the end of the range of motion where the muscle is the shortest. So you're essentially overloading the shortened position. And I've yet to meet someone who's done lateral raises and actually gotten sore from it if they're dumbbell lateral raises, especially if they've been training for maybe more than a few weeks, to be honest. So they're not a very stimulative exercise, in my opinion. Um, I don't think they're a very good exercise, but simply switching to cables. Now, all of a sudden you have a relatively even force curve and it's hard the whole time through because now you're not just, uh, opposing gravity. You're opposing the uh, direction of tension from the cables. And you can exaggerate that even more by doing uh, variations of cable lateral raises where you start with your arm in front of you, reaching across, Get those say your, yeah, your opposite pocket. Or if your glutes aren't too big and juicy behind, and you have shoulder mobility behind your back, reaching to kind of your opposite back pocket, or even manipulating the dumbbell. So for example, you lying on, on an inclined bench, reaching across your body. So it's overloaded to the bottom. And now all of a sudden you can get into a more stretched position and load it in that position so that it is uh, kind of the opposite in terms of the actual uh, emphasis to a traditional dumbbell lateral raise, which is harder in the shorter position and very easy, if not nothing, in the most lengthened length position because the dumbbell is directly in line with gravity straight down. So the big one I'd say for delts is uh, cross body behind the back uh, variations of cable lateral raises. And um, yeah, they, they made a pretty substantial difference when I, of course, also did them with a relatively high volume and frequency for me relative to what I did. And I would say for anyone who wants to give these a try, you don't have to do the shotgun approach of do higher volume, closer to failure, and start with this new exercise. Just take what you're currently doing. And if you're doing mostly dumbbell lateral raises, just swap them to cables behind and across the body. And overhead press, it's still, it's still a great exercise. It's just that it is primarily useful for anterior delt development. And if you're doing incline, decline, dips, bench, and any, every, every press, even flies, train the anterior delts. Um, and uh, they may not really be needing that much more work. Um, and the overhead press does train the medial delt, but probably not as good as something like a cross body cable lateral raise from a stretch position. Did you use any intensity techniques or just more straight sets? I have, um, but it came down more to, and I do now, but it comes down to more to, to time availability. Um, so quote unquote intensity techniques, something like a rest pause, uh, or a drop set. Um, I think they are most useful in situations where they are not going to produce a ton of cardiovascular fatigue. So if you're doing, let's say, drop sets or rest pause on a barbell squat and you're doing it in the 15 rep range, that's just a fantastic way to, uh, to die. Um, and it is very challenging. And if you actually look at what's the output of, let's say you did, you know, a series of drop sets and if we were to actually get you on a force plate and look at your impulse, which is just the force over time, it would be a lot less than if you did straight sets uh, in, say, like the six to eight rep range, stopping two rep shot of failure on squats. Because that overall fatigue, the perception of fatigue and the cardiovascular fatigue is going to create so much uh, discomfort that you're going to have to end up dropping the load for non-muscular reasons. 
Um, so I don't actually advise quote unquote intensity techniques on like compound, especially lower body movements. Um, where they are very useful though, is when you can make sure that the fatigue is going to be predominantly peripheral in the specific muscle you're training. You're, it's unlikely that doing a drop set on cable lateral raises is going to make you huff and puff to the point where that's actually constraining your ability to do work. However, um, it is likely to produce a lot, a lot of local fatigue. And this is where you can get equivalent outcomes. And there are numerous studies where they compare drop sets or rest pause sets on, like say, arm work, like bicep curls, uh, where you get similar outcomes to straight sets. It just requires a little more work. You have to roughly match the, the work and then you're getting the same outcome because it's not confounded by fatigue. So um, I do it from time constraints because I have to do relatively high volume to get my physique to where I want it to be these days, trying to eke out the last 5% of my potential and also being busy. So when I get down to my isolation movements for my upper body, including uh, lateral delts, I do do drop sets and rest pause more often than I just do straight sets. Okay. Uh, but it's not because they're better. Um, but it is a useful way for me to get the equivalent of three straight sets or four straight sets, which would normally take me six to 10 minutes to get, you know, one long drop set or a rest pause series done in one third that time um, and get about the same. And for those who are wondering, rough equivalents, guessing based upon the literature, let's say you do three straight sets on something. If you do uh, one top set and then three drops, probably pretty equivalent. Or if you do one top set and then you do three rest pauses afterwards, probably pretty equivalent. 